but I also am the director and founder of I Need Diverse Games. So if you've seen that on the internet, that was me causing trouble about three years ago because I was legit mad about video games. And part of what I do is often talk about politics online to the detriment and dismay of many people. Um, you may notice we are missing someone. Unfortunately, Inspector Beans could not join us, so I've taken over moderator duties. Hi, Tara. I hope you're watching from home. Um, so before we get into our conversation, just one thing. When we get to Q&A, have a question. Do not have any comments. Soliloquy your life story. If you'd like to talk to us after the panel, please do so outside. But because we are talking about politics and Twitch, I'm going to moderate even harder than I normally do. So anyone in this room who's seen me on a panel, you know what I'm talking about. Um, when we do get to questions, there'll be wireless mics on each side of the room, and you'll be guided to those. So before we get into our discussion, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Brian. My friends call me Citizen. I'm a product marketer at Twitch. Hi. My name is Jenna Sequa. I'm a variety streamer and an affiliate. My name is Adam Koble. Uh, I'm a Twitch broadcaster and a game designer. Um, and I'm probably best known for my work as the game master at Roll20.net or on Roleplay. All right, and since we unfortunately don't have a deck or presentation, I'm just going to quickly read you the description, and then we'll get into discussion. Um, so our panel is concerned with addressing the importance of being political as a creator, as a representative of a business or organization, and as a streamer. The purpose of our panel is to help empower people by talking openly about the risks and gains of struggling in a landscape that demands conformity and the continued repression of identities. We'll talk about whether a Twitch channel constitutes a public or private space, and what that means on the internet. Why these discussions are important, what free speech is and isn't, to a degree, we are not attorneys, and how people can challenge and engage in politics on their channel. Um, so to start out, um, let's talk about what it means to be political, because frankly, when I hear, I don't like politics on my channel, I don't allow it, it's usually white people that have zero, of, zero anything to lose. They can afford to not talk about politics, to not be political, as it were. For those of us on the stage, we don't have that luxury. And people often politicize our existence before we've said a word, whether we're out in our channels, in our content, or anything else. Um, and I know Brian and Adam often have talked about this, and, and Jenna has as well. Um, so who wants to start about what it means to be political on Twitch, and whether or not we are public or private on our channels? I, mean, I think it's worth talking a little bit more about the idea of politics and apolitics, right? The idea that it is possible for anyone to not be political. Because even the statement, we don't talk about politics in this channel, is a political stance. It reinforces the status quo, and it's, it's a choice. So there is no way, no matter how self-deluded we want to be, there's no way to uh, evade or opt out of the, the politics of a platform like Twitch. So I think, that's, I think that's an important thing to kind of remember from the get-go, that we're not an exception in that every decision, every communication, every statement, everything that we do in our moment-to-moment -moment lives as public figures is in some degree or another uh, a political action. And to expound upon that, um, politics doesn't have to be Democrats versus Republicans. It can be any divisive issue. So if you have an opinion about something, you're probably being political on Twitch if you're talking about it in your channel. Like recently there's been this whole stream games, not boobs drama. And if you have an opinion about that, guess what? You're being political. So it doesn't just have to be like, maybe you don't want to talk about Democrats or Republicans, that's fine. But you're probably talking about politics in some other fashion, whether you realize it or not. Yeah, as a, as a Canadian, the Democrats, Republicans thing is just... <laughs> right over your head, I'm sorry. Like, sweetie. I'm aware that it exists, but we, we don't work that way. So, <laughs> yeah, if that were the case, if that was the only definition of political, then there, you'd be exempting a massive right. portion of the population right. for that conversation. Right, for sure. One thing that's important to me is that I understand why some people um, don't want to talk about certain divisive issues because for a lot of us, we're tuning into Twitch and just kind of trying to unwind after a long, stressful day, and that's kind of what being part of the community is about. I think the important thing that I am more interested in is that there's another segment of the community that, after looking at the news all day and kind of maybe being stressed out or maybe being worried or just seeing things that are confusing, for some people, coming and having community around those things is really important. And so I'm really hopeful that the through people speaking out that we can get, we can make people realize that when people do want to have spaces to have that, that it's still part of Twitch and that that is still part of what Twitch can offer um, to the overall community. 
All right, kind of going on with that, I want to talk about the challenges that um, any of us face as someone who chooses to address politics consciously. Because a lot of times our content will bring about questions that are quote unquote political. And whether or not we want that to happen on our channel, it often does. I'm, I'm someone that's often accused of politicizing non-political spaces. Uh, I have a lot of overlap with the tabletop role-playing game community, which is a traditionally fairly conservative, very white, very male uh, community. And I like to introduce themes into the games that I play uh, that are not necessarily in line with those, uh, those traditions in that space. And so for me, I get... I wouldn't say it's harassment exactly, but I get called out a lot by people who want to uh, just just have fun or just unwind or like they want a fantasy land of elves mm -hmm. and dwarves and white people and introducing <laughs> things that are not that stuff uh, is, uh, is, a, is a divisive choice. Um, and so it, it varies depending on the audience, right? Because for some people that inclusion as a political decision is beneficial, right? There's issues of representation and, and what have you. So I do that because there's, there's real good there. But for a lot of my audience, there is some degree of sort of eye rolling and like, oh, okay, Adam's including another like queer NPC in his campaign. Like, great. Oh no, not a queer NPC. Yeah, no, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. So this is, this, is the, this is the baseline by which I judge all of my feedback from fans. There was a, an early, uh, early on in my career as a broadcaster, I was running a, a game called Swan Song, and uh, during an episode, I introduced a new NPC, uh, and someone in the YouTube comments said, oh look, another woman. Which, in and of itself, is a disgusting, stupid thing to say, but what was funny was that the immediate comment following it is, you know, I went back and checked, there's exactly half the NPCs in the game are women, and the person said, still too much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, you know that there's that study about when women are talking, even though if there's like 10 of us and one woman says something, women are overtaking the conversation. Sure, and I think, I think that's the thing, right, is that the idea of even paying attention to the amount of time that a, uh, a woman is taking, taking up space in a conversation, even being aware of that is seen as a, a political decision, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to bring politics into my fantasy land? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, for me, I, I can't help it. it. You know, a lot of games that I play will have political content, whether or not I'm choosing to engage with it as I'm streaming, but an uh, example for me is Mafia 3. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a big fan of the game. But it is set in 1968 Louisiana. The devs did not shy away from the political implications. It is set during the Vietnam War. And, you know, political events are correlated to the events of the game, so there's no way to escape politics while I'm playing this game. And a lot of people go, well, why do you have to make it about race? And I'm like, um, black protagonist? <laughs> why do you have to make Mafia 3 about race? <laughs> Did someone actually say that to you? <laughs> that among some other sure. <laughs> comments. And then the um, other stuff. But, you know, but it's the idea that by merely choosing to share a game where there is a black protagonist, I am therefore being political. So, like, well, I, can't, I don't work at Hangar 13, so I can't help you. Um, Jenna or Brian, do you have anything before we move on? Um... I did, but then I got distracted and forgot. <laughs> That's okay. We, we, there's plenty to talk about. Don't worry. Um, so we've already talked about what it means when we say politics. Um, and, you know, and this may be a tricky one since Brian is staff, but how do you feel that Twitch as a platform allows you to engage in political conversations around or through games? Which I kind of jumped the gun with my own response, so go, go for it. Well, I think the whole point of Twitch is the community interaction. And that's also what the foundations of most of our political systems are based on is the community interaction. And so for me as a staff member, um, I do have my staff hat on right now and I almost wish I could do this panel as, <laughs> as a staff member. So that's one of the reasons I'm having a hard time finding some things to say about this stuff. I guess I have to be very careful. But um, the way that I try and look at this is that this is all, all, all of these interactions, I think, to build on what Adam's saying, are inherently political. And they're all, we, have, we, we as a society right now aren't having the conversations that we need to be having. And honestly, it is easier for people to participate in chat behind their computer screen and engage in these ideas that maybe they're not engaging with in their everyday life. Um, but when, as a streamer, it can be really challenging because some days I have the energy to try and help you get woke, and some days I don't. <laughs> And you have a five-point penalty for using woke. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Um, so, 
So yeah, I think it's that's one of the things that I think is it's an incredibly powerful tool, but also it's it's. It, it, sometimes we just don't have the energy for it, and I understand that and respect that. So I'm really interested to see to hear what you guys have to say. Well, I thought that Twitch has been doing, you know, something to try to bring it into the platform, with like the um, the conventions last year were streamed, and then the hearing was streamed, and they did a voter registration drive. So I feel like Twitch is trying to contribute and wanting to include politics on its platform. It's just still looking for ways to do that. And then as broadcasters, we have to take it upon ourselves to also find out ways that we can innovate and do that as well. Because at some point, being silent is complicit, and I never want to be complicit for something like that ever. Well, the thing about a, a platform like Twitch is that as a representation of a uh, an apparently public space, and we can obviously talk more about this later, but as a representation of a, a neutral space, I think that they're in a position as an organization that's a bit tricky because you have to advance the idea that politics is important without taking a stance in any particular direction, right. which is why things like engaging people in participating in the democratic process is a safe political choice for Twitch to make because they're saying, go and vote for whoever you want. Make your own decisions, however poor they might be. <laughs> um, so I don't think I don't think that I both don't think that Twitch does much for increasing the political discourse on its platform, but also I don't know that it's necessarily something that is a priority or even really a necessity for the platform to do, right? Mm -hmm. Because you run the you run the danger of uh, creating a space for uh, the bad kind of politics conversation, right? YouTube has problems with this. Um, where by saying Twitch is about some stuff, but politics may not be a thing that Twitch as a corporation is about, it's able to leave that space neutral. And then, as, as you said, uh, it's on us to, as broadcasters or as personalities, to choose where we want to push that conversation. And we as individuals have a lot more both responsibility and ability to say, I am going to take a particular stand on this thing, and we're going to talk about it from this angle. Yeah, if I could, so one of the things that I have to, I, so I've been a really big advocate for doing things like DNC, RNC, and Twitch votes and having these conversations. And even in, when I first um, presented the idea of the DNC and RNC to the company, I, ha I had a lot of conversations about like, oh, well, but like, what if the bad politics end up on here? My, um, my belief, and, the, and hopefully what most people ended up believing after I talked to them, because they've been very supportive of us doing this work, is that even for those bad people that are doing so-called bad politics, I'd much rather that happen with a community that can hold them accountable and with chat and then not be able to kind of speak in an unchallenged vacuum. Um, right. Go ahead. Oh, the right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that that's, that's one of the things is like, ultimately as a platform, we're going to attract the like, when we say what we want to be inclusive and be diverse, we also mean for ideas that maybe are, are particularly challenging for us. But Twitch actually offer through the level of interaction that we can have with community offers the opportunity to kind of engage on those subjects, which actually, personally, I think is not happening enough as um, everyone becomes more and more polarized. We need to be having more of those conversations and challenging one another in a healthy and respectful way. You know, and I want to bring up the the obvious issue of you know for. For Jenna Saquon and I, you know, being two black women who are on Twitch, often on camera, and things we choose to talk about, um, because I'm part of Spawn on Me podcast as well, and, you know, when we do a fundraiser for Eric Garner's family, when we do a fundraiser for reproductive rights, you know, there's no gray line there. We're being political as we can be, but a lot of times we get challenged or, you know, again, if we talk about these issues, Black Lives Matter, et cetera, you know, we have that additional challenge of we've already got to deal with racism and other things that kind of unfortunately are part and parcel of the internet at this time. So I wanted to know if you had any additional thoughts, you know, specific to challenges you or I might have in terms of race playing into how we discuss politics. Well, I feel like for me myself personally, who I am is, is, is um it's, it's politics. It is what it is. So there's no way for me to shy behind it or hide behind it. It affects me. I don't have privilege. I'm a double minority. So I definitely stand for what I believe in. And I can't worry about if it's palate pleasing to everyone. 
because it's, it's not going to be, but I'm open to have any conversation, to hear your views, and to have an intelligent discussion, because you don't get anywhere by arguing with each other. You have to listen and work together. So that's what I try to do. I try to listen to what you have to say and say, well, what about you think about it this way? And I'll, I'll think about what you're saying, but this is my life. This is what I live through. This is the trolls that I go through. So I've been there, seen that, done that. Yeah. I applaud you because I am out of energy and because we're being streamed, I will not swear as much as I normally do when I'm <laughs> broadcasting. Um, but you know, Adam and I have paneled together and one thing that comes up is privilege. Privilege of being able to have certain conversations, of being able to have the space and mental energy to educate people. Because for anyone who knows me on Twitter, Twitter burns up all of that energy for me. So if I'm streaming and I'm playing a game that's clearly political, I may have that you know, extra reserve, I may not, and a lot of times people expect that from you and demand that emotional labor. Um, if you're wondering what emotional labor means, unfortunately we don't have Wi-Fi, please Google it when you get a chance. <laughs> I'm not being funny, I mean really there's no internet to show you. Um, but I just wanted to touch on, you know, having the privilege on whether or not to educate for Brian and, and Adam really quickly. I mean, for me, it's, it's the acknowledgement of that privilege that makes me engage harder. Though I, I, I feel like, and this is probably part of, again, part of the, the privilege situation, I feel like part of what is my responsibility is to shut down conversations with, with certain intents, right? Like, I think there is room for like open engagement about political thought, but I'm not going to like sit down with a Nazi and have a conversation about things. Like, uh, they, they don't get talk. So it's about creating a functional space in which the right kinds of conversations can happen, and that is where the privilege comes in, and I'm being able to exercise that, because when I talk, people will not discount the things that I'm saying because of the color of my skin or because of my gender, right? So I have to be careful about how I use that and in what ways. Mm -hmm. Because I think that we, again, as broadcasters, neutrality is functionally more popular than having a political opinion. And uh, in a space where popularity means money, if you are willing to have conversations about politics, about gender, about sexuality, your bottom line will take a hit. Like, it's just, that's how it works. Um, I think that you can build community and you can build engagement that can help counter effect that. But yeah, I have to be willing to, to take that hit, right? I would rather be political than popular. As somebody that is, um a bisexual male, it's really easy for me to like, hi like hide. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I think building on what Adam was saying is like, when I, ha when I do kind of brush up against the edges of what other people experience, when somebody comes into my stream and starts using slurs towards me, for example, that doesn't happen very often. But when it does, you have this moment of like, this is awful, but also I'm so lucky that I don't have to, I have to deal with this once in a while. I don't have to deal with this every day. And it sort of in my mind sort of extrapolates to this point where like, it goes into like when you try and think of like infinity of like, you're like, I can't even begin to kind of approach what that's like. And that is one of the things that kind of motivates me to have, to kind of try and help have conversations around these things and kind of do what I can given, um, the privilege that I, I have to kind of create the space to sort of at least try and make a dent in this. And um, yeah, that's how I think about it. Oh, no worries. And since Adam brought up Nazis, it actually kind of segues into our next <laughs> question. Um, Speaking so to... of national <laughs> socialism. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was wondering, you know, for those of us on the panel, how do you feel the games contribute to a public conversation around politics? And of course, the example I'm going to use is Wolfenstein too. Because people are like, oh my god, you're putting politics in Wolfenstein. I have news Wolfenstein for you. Wolfenstein is a game that's literally about stabbing Nazis to death. <laughs> I was getting the there. Game. And it has always been that game. That I was getting there, on. Adam. Yeah. I I'm screwed so, up my segue. I'm so, exci I'm so excited about it. I'm just really excited about murdering Nazis, okay? Not as excited as I was to, to do the Klan rally mission in Mafia 3. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Um, <laughs> look, I got defeated. Why do you to an alligator? That's what made me buy that game. <laughs> Maybe I need to buy it. I haven't played this yet. Uh, we can talk about the catharsis parents. is a powerful experience. <laughs> so, you know, using Wolfenstein and Mafia 3 and other games, I do not shy away from politics. How do you feel that kind of informs the conversation? Because it's a choice to whether to stream this, whether or not to share it, to engage and the conversations that may come up as we play them. Well, so, I mean, Wolfenstein's a great example because if you look at the way that it's being marketed, it feels like 
the company is of two minds, right? There are the people who are savvy to the current political situation who are marketing this game with the imagery of, of Nazis and very strong, like, not here, we're not tolerating this shit, here's a hatchet, go and do something about it in the game. And even the devs, right, there's, a, there's an interview with one of the devs, I wish I could remember his name, where he expounds for a good minute and a half about how excited he is that there are so many different things you can do with a hatchet and a Nazi in his game. <laughs> But comparing and contrasting that is again going back to the sort of the corporate neutrality thing. There are people at uh, at Bethesda um, who are saying like we're not making a political statement by releasing Wolfenstein. It is not. It is not a political game. We are an apolitical organization. Please continue to give us your money, which to me feels like crazy talk. Right. It's it's gibberish because. There is that there is that drive to seem apolitical when you're releasing a game that is very much and has always been very much about a particular political stance. Mm -hmm. It's just that the winds in some neighborhoods have changed around that stance. And now they've just gone entirely the other way. Yeah, kill Nazis. We're going to give you tips in our marketing material. Well, and I just I just don't understand like the the marketing people who are saying like this is not a political statement. They're speaking directly to people who are upset that there is a game about killing Nazis. Like you're trying to sell this game to Nazis. I don't, I just don't understand, like it boggles my mind. In a world where everything is already political, trying to hide what seems to me to be a very aggressively political game behind this kind of bland corpse speak of, like, no, it's just a game. Does a disservice to the people that are buying it, thinking about buying it, and to the art form overall. Yeah, yeah I, I don't understand, this is one of the things that I, I don't understand where this, I feel this pressure. I feel this pressure to not be sure. political. Earlier on in my career, I was like told like explicitly like you are not to have a Twitter, you are not to speak out, you are not to say these things. Like it could look badly on the company. And so I didn't. And even even being a person that has like was elected president pro tem of the California State Youth Senate, like I was like, "Oh, okay, sure." And so this idea that even to uh, approaching anything if politics is associated with it at all is bad. I don't, I, I, I'm, I still really struggle with that, and I think that like that's a manifestation of that, where it's like, oh yeah, if, if someone ever says the word politics around us, then all of a sudden everybody's gonna get up in arms. And I feel, one of the things I feel empowered to do is say like, this, this is what we're supposed to do. This is what a healthy democracy is about, mm -hmm. is talking about these things. And when we're saying that we're not gonna talk about it because we're not gonna talk about like corporate power and how that works, like, that is just like, it's crazy to me. Like, it's okay to have opinions about these things. And I think that it's really dangerous that we're in the situation where we, it just silence is kind of expected. And part of the reason I'm, I, I was really, really happy to see this panel here and that to see that there are, are so many awesome members of the community that want, want to do this is because like, I think that like Twitch gives you a platform to speak your voice. And we need to have more people doing that. We have to have more people normalizing that. We need to show more people that it is okay to engage in this. And not only is it just okay, but we need you. We need a huge, diverse like, range of opinions to, to, so that we can all come together, go through a gauntlet of ideas, and come out on the other side. And the idea that like, we have to shy away from, from things like Adam is saying, is just, it, it's something that I still have a really hard time understanding. It goes back to what he said about um, money. Even as a broadcaster, you could lose viewers and you lose subs and lose donations based on if they don't agree with you. Like you have secretly have um, a KKK member who's following you. Oh wait, what? You don't believe in us? Okay, bye, Felicia. We're gonna unsub and give you our money. And you have to be okay with not wanting that money. And that's probably why, like, also the company Bethesda has got the um, blanket statement, like, this game isn't political, because at the end of the day, they want the money. But you have to want to have money to use it in positive ways to prevent this stuff from escalating further. And you just have to be bold enough to start the conversation. Don't wait for someone else to start the, case, start the conversation. Take the first step yourself, because if you wait, if everybody waits, what are we waiting on? Who's going to step? Yeah, cause I am. Because <laughs> not all money is good money. Everyone in this room needs to remember that just because you can make money doing something does not mean you should. Because you gotta look at yourself every day in the mirror for every deal that you make. And you know, that's across the board, but especially when it comes to someone wanting to silence you, you know, for your views to go, hey, sign this contract, but you can't talk about being queer, you can't talk about race. Well, sorry, I can't do business with you. But that's me. I'm luckily in a position where I can kind of do that. Not everyone is. So that's that's something to think about. 
you know, read contracts carefully. And remember, if someone's asking to silence you, that is not okay. Um, but I want to kind of transition and, and focus on Brian for a second, because, you know, you already brought up bringing the DNC and RNC to Twitch. Um, and I want to talk about uh, Twitch Unity, not to beat a dead horse. We've already talked about this a lot at the con. I was in the booth. Uh, but I want to talk about it because people politicized Unity without knowing what it was about. You know, they saw the folks being highlighted. Adam was part of that. And it was immediately politicized because, you know, we heard the usual SJW bullshit and all this other stuff. I cussed. Sorry, not really. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you were a big part of that. And I wanted to not talk so much about the event itself, but the ways in which it was kind of politicized and the ways that you maybe dealt with that going into it and knowing what could come on like Twitch Unity Day itself. We were really fortunate to have, so for those of you guys that don't know, Twitch Unity was a day where we celebrated um, diversity and inclusivity on Twitch. We wanted to highlight people from all over, all walks of life, all, all um, races, backgrounds, um, genders, and we just inherently don't, we, we were lucky enough to have a team of people at Twitch, all the way up to the, to the CEO, Emmett, of saying, like, this isn't political. Saying that we want Twitch to be for everyone and that we want our, our family to be even larger, like, just inherently is not political. And if you think it's political, then like, we, we need to have, the, the, the Twitch family is too important and it is changing too many people's lives to, to, to be exclusionary towards, towards, towards people. Mm -hmm. And so we were really, really lucky to have support from um, everyone in the company towards doing this. And so it, it honestly wasn't even, the, the, the politics on it, of it wasn't even really considered because we just didn't really view the, the counter argument to that to be valid. True, and it's, it's not so much that Twitch was politicizing it, it's that when people saw Twitch Unity, they heard about it, they politicized it for you. Because again, and this is what I call manifest destiny of gamers, if it's not mine and I can't touch it and someone else gets a slice of the pie, that means I will never get pie again, you know, then they acted like, oh, you're, you're focusing and giving spotlight to people who normally don't get that, then, you know, Twitch is not for me and you're kicking me out and you don't care about me, bro dude gamer is gonna play Call of Duty for 10 hours a fucking day. So, you know, that's where I'm going with that. Um, but if Adam, if you have thoughts, because you were part of the campaign, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think to the, to the degree that it was politicized externally is just a byproduct of anything that deviates from the status quo as being perceived as political, right? There is, there is the homogenous, apolitical, normative structures of gaming, right, the culture there, and then anything that moves away from that is seen as a political choice. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely don't think that and this might be self-deception on, on the part of Twitch as an organization, but I, I don't think that they intended Twitch Unity to be a political statement. In the same way that, like, Capra Pride isn't a political statement, uh, in so much as you can maintain neutrality around these things, but the perception is that by highlighting a particular group, like, the, the most common response is, like, where's white guy gamer day? Right, where's straight gamer day? You mean a day ending in why? Every other day. Right, well, and, and, that's, and that's the thing, right, is that perception that the differences between, and this is a thing that, that I think people generally in, in discourse have a hard time getting their head around, is the differences between equality and equity, right? The idea of boosting a silenced group or boosting a marginalized group up to the level that everyone else, which is to say the normative structures already have, versus like, oh, they get their own day? Cool, where's mine, right? And so it's, it's that, that jealously guarded, gatekeepery mm -hmm. kind of like protect the status quo thing because the status quo is seen as the neutral choice. So any action in any direction is seen as being a, a divergence. Yeah. Um, so I want to uh, shift slightly again and talk about identity and forming our political procliv proclivities. It's been a long weekend. I can't talk anymore. Um, so, you know, all of us have various intersections of marginalization. I was wondering how that informs the conversations you have and then, you know, what kind of response have you seen that you maybe didn't talk about before where if you are actively political, you talk about being queer, black, female, et cetera, what has that, what has that brought to your channel or detracted from? Have you had anyone respond negatively to you being intentionally political? Uh, being like fairly vehemently anti-capitalist in my channel means I never get donations, <laughs> like ever, because if I'm like, money is evil, People aren't going to be like, have some evil, Adam. <laughs> Here's a big old pile of evil. Um, you know, I, I think that 
the, the conversation that you have about whatever you're talking about informs the behavior of the people in your community. So, and you can see this on, on all aspects of Twitch. The things that you encourage, either indirectly or directly, people will do and talk about. Um, for me, my, I put my queerness up front as part of the conversation. Um, and while a lot of my content is informed by that, and that's, that's a, a part of the content, um, I wouldn't say that it is like dominating that, that conversation. Um, but then again, I don't get a lot of like, it's okay that you're queer, but could you not talk about queer stuff so much? That doesn't happen to me as much. Um, I think that there are definitely more visible ways in which people are marginalized where it's like, it's okay that you're black, I'm okay with that. Stop talking about black stuff and play the game. Mine. Right? <laughs> I've seen that happen and I'm sure you have lots of experience with it, but that doesn't happen to me so much. Well, if someone says, don't stop talking about black stuff to you, I would be really confused. <laughs> yes, I mean, the analogy is that you gotta follow the, the thing. But yeah, I mean, for me, like, like you were saying before, um, Citizen, it's, it's relatively easy to obfuscate the things for which I am being marginalized. I try really hard not to obfuscate them because that feels like cowardice to me, but it, I can, I have that, that safety mm -hmm. net, so. Jenna, do you have thoughts? Um, as far as my identity and how, how it contributes to my channel, like, I have a really positive community, but I encourage diversity of all kinds, all forms, all fashions, and I've noticed that we're like a little family, and we, we do think similarly, and when someone comes in and doesn't think how we think, you know, we try to include them in the conversation and keep them, and I mean, they don't stay based on... Um, some things like, for example, I know I'm really big on representation. Representation matters. If you don't see someone that looks like you or acts like you or feels like you doing something, you don't know that it's possible. So when I play video games, I do strive to include, like I play a lot of The Sims, so I strive whether or not I'm bisexual or not, I try to include those kind of characters in my game. So anybody who's watching feels included and they're like, you know what? I can put this in my game or I can do this. And I play a lot of games where I control the narrative. So like if I'm playing Skyrim, my character is gonna be a black woman. It's just, it's what it is. I wanna take that high elf and I wanna make it the darkest high elf you've ever seen and probably name her Beyonce. It's just, it's what it is. <laughs> Um, even in Fallout 4, like my Fallout 4 is Beyonce and Jay-Z, so that's who they are. Um, so this is that kind of thing is what I talk about a lot. I try to encourage people to realize that you can do whatever you put your heart to, whether you see yourself there or not. And some people are not receptive to that. They, they want it to be only them, just one mindset, and one mindset is not the way to go. You have to reach outside of yourself and see who else is in your community and, and speak to that as well. So that's what I try to do. For me, I think that um, I don't... I don't stream as much because I'm on a different Twitch grind and uh, I work a lot because I, I feel like I can make a really big impact on the community in that way. But um, in the past, it's been really difficult to kind of, uh, I, think, I think similarly to the way that broadcasters would probably look at this, like me speaking out about politics is risky in the same way I think that like for Adam, would, where it's like, oh, I'm sacrificing in this way because now all of a sudden people are like, well, the politics gets in the way of this other mission that you have. Um, and being at Twitch has been pretty transformative for me in that I feel very empowered to, I think that as a platform where we try and empower a lot of different voices, I felt very empowered as an employee to be able to speak out personally as a citizen off platform um, about what's going on. Um, and in general, I think that going back to what I said earlier, is just being motivated by hearing the stories of what other people are going through and trying to see if I can use, use the position that I am given, given the corporate power that I'm given. I've been really empowered by leadership and by people um, in a way that I never really thought was possible and I'm eternally grateful for to be able to continue to kind of like do things like Twitch votes and get people registered to vote or do things like um, stream the, the, the Comey hearings and hopefully we'll be able to do more of those things in the future. Um, for me, a lot of times, like, like Jenna said, I make a very conscious effort to, if I'm playing RPG and I can actually be you know, darker than I am in real life, I do that. I, I do same-sex romance in a game. I do same-gender It's, it's very, very important for me in a, a role-playing game if I can make the boys kiss. Oh. Aww. <laughs> it's very... It's, Make more girls kiss. And then kiss. the other stuff. <laughs> Make more girls kiss. You gotta start that is somewhere. my request. Um, but you know, I, I don't shy away from that. And I, a lot of times when I play these games, I'll get, why are you playing a black character? Why are you doing this? Why, why do you have to like, be all gay? And I'm like, because the game lets me and I want to, and you came to my channel. Um, but you know, again, it's the politiza politicization, forget it, I can't pronounce it, 
um, of what you're doing as a streamer. And one thing I want to acknowledge is that a lot of times when people come in and they're having these moments, it may not always be a regular viewer, it may not always be a sub, it could be some rando who found your channel through searching and they decided today was the day they wanted to try it with you. And you know, they have nothing better to do. So, you know, keep that in the back of your mind when you're thinking about how you, you know, run your chat, run your channel, because you're not always beholden to people to give them the time of day. I mean, personally, I don't, I, but I have a very strict moderation policy based on how I get treated in other spaces online. Um, and Adam and I have had this conversation before, he doesn't. Um, but I wanted to ask for those of you that stream more regularly, or even, you know, Brian, since you're staff and can kind of ban hammer wherever you want, when someone does try to force that political conversation, do you feel obligated to respond to them or do you just kind of let the community deal with it? And I, I'd like Jenna to talk more, so I'm going to make you speak first. <laughs> I don't feel obligated, but I have a policy. You can ask me any question that you want to. If I want to answer it, I'm going to answer it. If not, I'm not, we're going to move on. So I don't feel obligated to respond to it, but I do try to take everything as maybe a teaching opportunity, whether for me or for the viewer that is posing this question. If it's something that I have knowledge about and I'm willing to speak on, then I will. If it's something that maybe I don't have knowledge on, then maybe we can talk about it together. We can do some research together and we can learn more about this. But I never feel obligated, but it's not something that I would shy, ever shy away from talking about my opinion and how I feel, because then that invalidates me and I'm a very validated person. Anyone else? I do, I mean, personally, like, I think it's more of, I feel like a moral obligation to engage with somebody, especially given the fact that like, I just personally believe that people aren't engaging enough. However, it's usually pretty easy to suss out if somebody is, in, is like trying to engage like in a genuine manner or if they're just trying yes. to engage because they're trying to stir the pot or they're trying to like get a reaction and they're trying to kind of, um, I don't know, feel powerful by getting that reaction. Um, so I always try and do at least due diligence in like talking to that person and being like, wow, are they really curious about like what I think? Or are they really curious about this topic that I might know something about? Or are they just trying to like get me into a trap where they can then be mean to me? Yeah, you, you develop you develop a pretty good bullshit thermometer where you can be like, mm, that sounds like ignorance, not malevolence, right? And right. being able to judge that uh, quickly and not have it interrupt whatever else you're trying to do is pretty useful. Um, so one thing we alluded to in the beginning was, you know, whether Twitch constitutes a public or a private space, because Twitch is a platform that we are getting to use, but it's still something that is forward facing because you can't hide a Twitch stream, you can't really do much except put a lot of restrictions on your chat. So for those of you that are, that are streaming and, and having these conversations, do you feel like it's public, anyone who wanders in can have any kind of say, or is it, this is my channel and as much as we own any channel, and it's private, and I set the rules, this is my domain. I super want to go on like a cyber Marxist tear about like crypto fascism, but I'm not going to. Um, we only have 20 minutes, you yeah, guys. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think uh, to a certain degree, this question is tied into the idea of privacy and identity in the current age, right? And then with broadcasters especially, there is a degree of yourself that becomes either perceived as or in some literal way a public property. Um, I think that Twitch as a platform is a series of interconnected non-private spaces, right? You can't and shouldn't, it's not built for that. Um, so yeah, I think that if, if you think that there is any sort of um, like privacy available on this platform, you may want to rethink <laughs> that. And it's not, these days, it's not even just your stream with the IRL streamers, you can get a camera in your face any day. So it's definitely public, you can't lock it, like you can lock your Facebook or your Twitter or your Instagram. Other than banning someone, there is no way to make it private. Yes, you can have your rules, at the end of the, and at the, end of the day, if you ban someone, they can make five new accounts to come find you again. Like, mm -hmm. So it really, is, it really is a public space, like there's nothing private about it until you turn off your camera. Yeah, so I'm going to take a little different approach for this and put my staff hat on again. Um, but I think that we try and, as staff members um, on the communications team, make sure that we provide the tools to people so that at least the folks that are engaging, that there is an ability for any streamer to create the community that they want to create. Um, while, um, to Jenna's point, you can't actually stop people from watching because it is public. You can't, we, we do keep trying to do things like Automod, like follower only, like, um, uh, like even slow mode and more moderation tools and empowering the moderators to do better at their job to hopefully be able to give people the ability to create a community that they're really proud of. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's public, it's out there, you know, and especially if you're not an affiliate or partner, you, there are, I mean, there are tools everyone can use, but, you know, it depends on also exposure, I think. Because, you know, someone with like 10 followers could sit there and rant all day about politics and nobody would be the wiser, versus someone who has like a platform like Adam or a larger following. It's harder to, that, that line between public and private isn't blurred, but it's, it's who has exposure, who has a chance to be seen and heard as well. Because, you know, I could talk about politics, and while I have somewhat of a platform, it's not the same as if Adam or, or I can't think of a really big streamer, if they start going on these tangents while they're streaming, it's also thinking about, you know, if, you know, I'm going to pick on Adam, I'm sorry. But if he and I get into this political debate, especially because he's Canadian, and we start arguing and he's in his channel, it's going to be like, oh my god, you see what Adam said on, about politics on Twitter? I'm just if it's if you get in an argument with a Canadian, I'm just going to apologize a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so in know. advance, I'm really sorry. Like, I apologize, I'm sorry. I don't know what we were arguing about. We know, for an example, you know, it's also a matter of exposure. Because some people, we know people do terrible things on streams, and no one's the wiser because they don't have an audience. Uh, but I want to get one more question in before we open it to audience questions. And, you know, and that is, what advice would you give to someone who does want to be conscious about it and actually bring politics into it, or if politics comes to them and they're kind of wondering what will happen, how would you advise someone to, to bring this into their channel or manage it in their channel? I mean, it depends on that person, right, and the, the place that they have. Like, there is no generic advice. I would give different advice to different people based on where they exist in the grand spectrum of political bullshit that exists in the <laughs> world, right? Like, for some people, people who are uh, on the uh, straight, white, male end, I would be like, listen more than you talk, boost other people's signals, right? Counter marginalization, like, be aware of these things, don't be an ignoramus and like have these conversations, normalize this stuff, right? But I would not give that same advice. I wouldn't say like, just get out there and do it and be tough to a person who is more visibly marginalized in that space. I would be like, take care of your own self first, right? And like have a network of people who will support you. Like it's, it's very different because I think, and this is the thing about politics generally, is that we like to think of it as one grand thing but the, the politic is personal, right? And that everybody is both affected by politics in a personal way. The things that they have to say and the way that they are given to say those things varies really wildly, so. Yeah. Yes, I agree with everything that he said. And then if you're taking Twitch seriously, you are being professional. You should be able to discuss politics in a professional way. You shouldn't be the drunk uncle on Facebook going on a rant about this, that, and that, and go back to Mexico or whatever. You should be able to talk in a respective way. So I would just say to make sure that you are listening, you are opening, and you're not shoving your politics down someone's throat. That won't get anything done. Arguments don't solve anything. You have to come together. So make sure that you're really open to other ideas, other feedback, and how you can come together to make this world a better place. I think that my advice, and I think this isn't really just advice, it's more just that I'm, I'm hoping more people can see this, but, you know, Twitch offers the tools and the abilities for people to, everything that you need to make change in the world. You have an audience, you have resources coming in through the donations, you have resources coming in through people's like time and energy, um, and there is, the potential exists to make some really awesome positive change in the world. I think that the best example of this is kind of like a little bit, to pivot a little bit, is to talk about all of the amazing charity work that happens on yeah. Twitch. I think like we don't, we don't really talk about that in the same sense of politics because people are clearly trying to do, um, I think it's a little bit more clear, or at least people perceive it as being a little bit more clear. <laughs> Um, but one of the things that we did last year was um, the Obama administration invited us to the White House so that we could talk about the Affordable Care Act. And we talked a lot about it internally, but what really, like, we viewed it as, as not political because we wanted, we wanted to make sure that our streamers had the best health care options that were available to them. And so we found a lot of streamers who were really excited to come talk about that. And one of the things I'm most proud of is seeing a few people just kind of have this moment of realization while they were sitting there and talking about this that wow, my audience is actually really huge. Like, people that were in the Office of Public Engagement were like, wait, you have this many, you're reaching this many people with this message? That's what we really struggle to do. And so if you are a streamer and you do have something that you really care about and you do want to see something change in a positive way, really consider the way that you and your community can tackle that challenge together. Awesome. Um, so we have about 15 minutes for questions. I invite you to go to either mic that is on 
Um, I can't see because the light is right in my face. Um, so you have about 15 minutes. Line up. Don't be shy. I don't bite much, but I'm going to remind you. Cool. Have uh, a question. I need to, Tanya, I need to duck out, but thank you. How dare you? I know. I'm overbooked. <laughs> thank you, Aaron, for being on the panel. Uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to go. All right, so I know that you were there first, and then I will get to you. Um, so remember, have a question. If you have a comment, hold it till we're done and in the hallway, um, so we can try to get through everyone's questions since we don't have a very uh, long line of folks. So yes, please, your question. Hi, my name is Quantum Dot. Um, so I know there is a lot of what I feel is very valid criticism concerning uh, Twitch Unity, both because of the lack of lead up to the event itself, um, that was touched on the Gaius panel yesterday, um, as well as folks that felt, um, myself included, that the vagueness of purpose behind the event did it a disservice. Um, I have a two-pronged question to Citizen. Actually, can you keep that to one, please? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so to Citizen and others as well, do you think that you see Twitch Unity as a platform or a stepping stone from which more elevation of minorities can happen? Yeah, I mean, that criticism is valid, and like, I, I sat with Anna and the team after, and we were like, oh, we were like, how do we think this went? We're like, oh, it could have, it could have gone way, way better. And, but we, we stopped to really, like, no matter, this is always going to be a problem. Like, we can always make incremental progress against it, but every single time we do an event like Twitch Unity, we're gonna be like, we could have done better. Because we care about it, and we want, we want to make it better. And so, and understanding that the people that are working on something like Twitch Unity, like, it wasn't any of our jobs necessarily to do that. It was really just, like, people putting in passion hours, like, after work, staying late to try and make those things happen. So, um, when I hear this, like, maybe there's not as much of a lead up or we could have done better, I totally agree with you and, like, we definitely want to get there. Um, and I think that we're going to have that conversation again after we do it the next time. And actually there was a panel yesterday at noon that addressed a lot of inequalities about Twitch Unity Day because, you know, this is a panel about politics. This is not, you know, ask the one staff member about a specific thing in question. I know we talked about it, but unity unto itself was not a political thing. Um, and so, Please find us after the panel so we can keep talking, but I want to make sure I get everyone's question. So yes, I'm sorry, I cannot see you because there's a light in my face. I, it's fine, ask your question. Hi, um, that's Oali Cat. Um, so, sorry to bring up YouTube, but I remember when the PewDiePie situation happened, I was actually on stream and I didn't know what was going on with Twitter or whatever, and somebody actually came into my chat and said it to me, right? So my question is, um, when things like that happen, why isn't there like a blatant thing from like the platform or just even from, because even people were defending him, like why isn't it just blatant like this is not cool type of thing, especially about racism and sexism, things like that. Why isn't it like blatantly out there, like Twitch is against this. Why is it like these words are allowed and things like that? That is a really great question. That is so far above my pay grade that I can't even start to answer it. Like, I really like my job, so. <laughs> but um, I want, if I can, um, but in all seriousness, like, we had, a, like, discussions about this as an entire company. We had a discussion about this even going up all the way to Amazon. Like, we had, there was, like, really, really serious deliberate deliberations about this, and um, we took it really seriously. I, uh, I'm usually about radical transparency, and actually, like, if I even knew anymore, I'd be trying to drop you guys even more hints, but I actually don't even know. So, um, I, I hear you, um, but uh, we, we take those things seriously, but I don't have any insight. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Hi. Uh, or hi. Um, hi. So, I just wanted a little bit of, like, uh, clarification and stuff. Like, um, everyone on like in this kind of platform and stuff is more left leaning, which is great. Tons of opinions. I'm a little bit more conservative, and I, I'd love to talk about politics and like talk with um, other people and like get more opinions and stuff. But I worry that it like a, a censorship will come because if I say something that might be a little bit unpopular, someone won't like it, and then I'll get censored for it. Which I, I if I if someone said something awful, of course, but. I worry that just because there's an unpopular opinion, it won't be liked and I'll be censored. Is there like a guarantee that we'll, we can talk and not, 
uh, for lack of a better word, not code our words and like truly get to the meat of the conversation? As long as it's within the terms of service. Like we have the terms of service, we have the community guidelines, it's there. Like that is our commitment to you that like we won't censor anything that doesn't cross those things. Um, I want to say that like the, the part of that question that resonates with me is that like I feel like I have that same fear. I have it on a different way though. Like I have, I still worry sometimes that when I tweet something about politics that like I'm going to get called into an office from some like you know, big lawyer that's like, <laughs> oh, guess what? You can't say that. And um, it's, it's, um, that hasn't happened. I'm even a little bit nervous talking right now in general on a panel about politics at TwitchCon as a Twitch staff member. So I hear you, but I think that it's up to us to kind of lead by example. Um, I think that we really want, I, I mean, I personally and Twitch, per, Twitch as a company wants to have this diverse range of opinions on there. So I would really encourage you to read the community guidelines and know them and so that like you can kind of um, you can engage with that. Now, that being said, if you're going to, like, we've talked about a, a lot about the, the, the rights of sort of individual streamers to have their chat and their discussions and their communities, like, be in the way that they want. And you'd be afforded that same thing. If somebody came in and was, like, saying some things that you disagreed with on, on a particular policy, you'd be well within your right to kick them out of your channel for, for that reason. Um, but from a Twitch standpoint and from an admin standpoint, um, I, I don't think that you should have to be worried about that. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, totally. Okay, so we actually still have 20, or I'm sorry, 10 minutes left. This is the least amount of questions I've ever had <laughs> being on a panel. It's okay. You can come and ask a question. Everyone's scared about talking about politics. But you're in this room. You, <laughs> you opted into this conversation. Um, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Where? Okay. I'm glad. Everyone standing at the side of the room I absolutely cannot see. Um, please have a question that is relevant to the panel. Please go forth. Uh, hi. So, um, in my stream, because I generally stream like a lot of Nintendo games, I get a lot of younger viewers. Um, and I'm usually the youngest person, or the oldest person, 30. I realize that's not that right. <laughs> I get it. Um, and so I get a lot of younger viewers, like teenagers, possibly preteens. And I try to be a very open vocally I'm about I'm sorry, but politics. I'm going to interrupt you and ask you for your question because we, we, there so, are people lining up. Absolutely. And so on that note, I kind of wanted to ask, you, uh, get your perspectives on, if, on dealing with younger viewers who may or may not have their politics fully uh, uh, formed. built yet, formed yet. Jenna, do you want to take that one? Because I don't really get super young viewers. <laughs> I do, yay, and I'm very cussy, so I'm like, oh my god, why are you watching me? But, <laughs> but as far as, you have to be cognizant that if there is a younger viewer, then they're very impressionable. Listen, I'm impressionable, and I'm like getting up there in age, and I, they, I still pick up things when I go around. So if you, if you believe in something, why not have someone else believe in it too? If you stand by what you believe in, there's no problem in someone else also believing in that. And look, you have done got someone over to your side. They're like a little puppy that you're training. So you've trained them to be like you. And there, I don't see a problem with that. I would think that's a great opportunity for you to get your ideas and your beliefs out there more. It's a good thing, awesome. as long as you're not cussing. So b before my time at Twitch, um, I worked really heavily with the YMCA in a program called Youth in Government, um, which is basically like we take kids all around the state, teach them about the different branches of government, and then we take over the state capitol uh, uh, over President's Day and we recreate the whole government. Um, so one of the things I think that's really important is that like, Honestly, democracy is not really covered very well in schools. Yeah, you have government class, but like that's really just kind of giving you the top tier <laughs> of like, oh, hey, this is how all this stuff works. Um, I find, I find a lot that younger people are always really, really curious about the way that these things are. And I think that taking a more professorial and kind of trying to explain things to them um, is totally fine. And like you can, they need to be exposed to different ideas. And I don't even necessarily think of it in terms of like the analogy of like, um, of training them. <laughs> but I was thinking like, of like a putty thing, but the oh, putty oh, came out. Yeah, like. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like you can be part of like, you know, I don't think, I think that you shouldn't be afraid to engage in a really honest way and treat them like they're adults because right. like they're going to be, honestly like we, the voter, voter participation, the people that actually do choose to engage with this is like just is depressingly low and it keeps getting lower and if you can do anything that you can possibly do to inspire someone to become an informed and active citizen, like you should definitely consider doing that. 
Yes, to the right, please. Hi, so I consider myself an activist and an ally, and I want to do my best to educate people who come into my channel. Um, during the transgender ban, I uh, hosted like a Sims, like LGBT, uh, LGBT plus community welcome uh, and accepted here. And I had some people come in and be like, well, I just want to say, you know, my opinion that goes against, you know, what you're standing for. And part of me wanted to reach out and educate them while I was playing the game, but part of me also wanted to be part of the game. So how do you deal with the obligation that you feel towards like answering these people and educating oh, them you. and also paying attention to your stream and playing the game? Um, so I deal a lot with this when I stream, especially games that have, you know, a political theme. W one, um, as, a, as a person who wants to help, you should not call yourself an ally. Um, secondly, it's cool that you did that, but a lot of times I think you should refer people to resources as you're not in the in-group and I, I personally and I don't know and I know other people feel very odd about someone who is not in the in-group trying to educate others, but we know the truth is people will listen to you as part of the out-group. So have a list of resources, make a command that's like, want to know about these issues? Go here. Here are links. Um, but also there, there is not an obligation to do so. You may feel a need and a drive to do so, but no one is ever obligated to educate because that is emotional labor. And a lot of us do emotional labor and have it forced upon us without wanting to. Um, so as someone who wants to help, I applaud you, that's great. Um, but I would say have resources at the ready. And when people ask you, because you're going to get people who, because you're having the stream, they're going to make assumptions, and they want to have their say. Remind them that this is not what we do here. There are rules, if you have rules for your channel. And you know, make it very clear that you are trying to help as a friend of the community, but here are people that you should listen to that this directly affects. And if you feel that drive, that's great, but also reach out to places like GamerX, um, Able Gamers, other places that are doing diversity work, and reach out to them and see what resources they have and promote those as well. Give people a voice that normally don't have one. Okay. Is there anyone on that side I can't see? There is, but, <laughs> there is, but I'll probably bend your ear after the panel. Go Great. ahead, I'm listening. Uh, we're about to hit that five. We have four minutes left, so please, quickly, give us your question. Um, I'm about to start a project on my channel that is going to be overtly political, even if I don't mean it to be. <laughs> um, and I'm just wondering, do you guys have any tips on kind of controlling the chat conversation? Not stopping people from saying what they want to say, but keeping it under control from going off the rails. Automod, 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 and human moderators and bots. Um, Brainbot unfortunately died, so I would say get Ankbot. Um, ask other people what rules they have. Check with other streamers and say what rules do you have, what parameters do you have. Um, I'll give you my card after. I'm happy to show the rules and parameters I have for Ankbot and other bots. Um, really use Automod and have human moderators present because while machine learning is great, it is still machine learning. The other thing, the other thing is, I would really recommend kind of like doing a powwow with your moderators beforehand, mm -hmm. and the it's so much more effective to have somebody do an at tag at them and be like, hey, here's a little bit of an explanation of like how we think about that. Um, when we did the um, DNC and RNC, we actually had a discussion room that was moderated by some folks uh, on the Twitch staff that had really strict rules about like no copy pasta, like you need to cite sources if you're going to talk about something. And we were amazed to find that like uh, simple, a lot of people were not sort of doing things uh, intentionally. Where if you just kind of ban and time time them out without kind of explaining it, like we we kind of had a lot of really great conversion from for, from people being a little bit of a problem to actually really engaging with it in the right way because sometimes people just don't really know how to engage in that. Way. Mm -hmm. My two cents. Um, on your stream, you're the leader. People look to you. So you really do can, can control how it's going to go. So you have to be cognizant of that as well. Say it a couple of times and then power with your moderators. If they know how you feel, and this is for you too, you're like, you don't want to distract from the game. If your moderators know how you feel, they can answer these questions for you. I mod for a friend and I know how she feels about certain things. So if she's busy in the game, she's wanting to get distracted, I do. I do address that in the chat. So your mods and you yourself personally can control your stream and control how that goes. Great. And uh, the person behind you, and you're probably going to be our last question, but like I said, we will be in the hall after the panel. Okay. Um, I have a little bit of a sort of abstract question. Um, okay, as long as it's actually a question because it's abstract about, as you uh, like. like the meaning of uh, like uh, uh, symbols and characters uh, that you can like add in chat. 
of uh -huh. like uh, images, like, um, and uh, sort of how do you, like, the are we talking about try hard? The characters have like sort of uh, symbols and um, like icons that have sort of secondary meanings to them. You mean emotes? In the yeah, chat? emotes. Yeah. So yeah, are you, are you talking about try like, hard? Pardon? Are you talking about try hard? Uh, no. Okay. No, no, not not in particular. Is he a streamer? It's yes. a it's a thing. <laughs> All right. So no, not try harding, uh, but like you'll have people spamming uh, characters, emotes, symbols, and sometimes they'll have either a racial context or mm -hmm. a political context or like hate hateful like connotations, but it's only like it, it could be abused, but so, it's not. I don't know if there's a consensus on not what really. the sort of characterization of like certain emotes are. Okay, I'm gonna cut you off one because we're almost out of time, and two because that was actually covered in other panels and the moderation panel. Um, people will use swastikas and things like that to be right. Harassers. So that's that's very overt, but like right, some things are a little bit uh, subversive, like dog whistles. Like that. Yeah. obviously, that's a, like a very obvious. Okay, so you can ban emotes. You can ban emotes because one of my friends has the Illuminati emote banned. I don't have any ban because I. You just okay. type, you just type it. You type it in the banned word section in your settings. Uh, so you can type try hard or Illuminati or whatever. You can ban emotes in the settings. Okay. All right. And we are actually at time. I'm sorry, but we will find you outside if if you want to talk more about emotes. And you know, there are moderation staff around. Try to talk to them. So thank you everyone for coming. Have a good rest of your time.